Before we even touch on how to write MA2 plugins, let's first figure out why we should even consider writing plugins for Grand MA2. To help us answer that question, I think it's important to understand the difference between MA2 macros and plugins. I will show you in comparison in just a second, but before I do, I want you to think about what macros and MA2 actually do. Every time you interact with the Grand MA2 console, you're essentially trigger sequences of commands in the background, right? So when you build macros, what you really do is save yourself some time by automating some of that interaction with the console in the form of a macro. And that's the thing that both macros and plugins have in common. Pretty much everything you do with plugins is to automate something that you could also be doing manually, which would simply just take a lot more time to do by hand. So both plugins and macros are essentially tools for you to automate repetitive tasks, but just like macros, plugins can get pretty complex the bigger they get. So while you learn how to build Lua plugins, keep the following truth in mind, please. Your audience only sees a bunch of lights, all right? Not your lines of code. So with that little bit of tough love in the back of your mind, let's take a look at what specifically differentiates plugins from macros in Grand MA2. All right, so we have the graphics right here. And the only thing that plugins and macros have fully in common is that both can trigger MA2 commands, but that's about it in terms of similarities. The first big difference is that plugins can actually read data from MA2, which is something that macros cannot do. With plugins, you can find out if certain objects exist and you can even access attributes, uh, child objects and use other functionalities. Um, with this show data. Now, as we'll see in later chapters, this functionality to read data is pretty limited, but at least it's there. The second big difference is math operations. With plugins, you get Lua as a full-blown programming language. And this means that you can divide, multiply, add, subtract, and get however complex you want with your math and uh, even use trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, not sure if you're ever going to need those, by the way, but it might be. With Lua, you get the full power of math operations of a full, mature programming language. In macros, however, the greatest achievement is simple addition and subtraction. So rather, you know, elementary school math here. Next is something incredibly important, conditional execution. You might know that in macros, you can execute lines of code based on a certain condition being true or not. So you can actually skip certain lines of a macro if a certain condition is not true. In Lua though, since it's a full programming language, you have multiple ways to create conditions that need to be true before certain code is executed. So you can even go as far as to combine multiple conditions that have to be true before you execute code. And this can get as complex as you want, helping you to be a lot more flexible when it comes to, for example, processing user input. Loops is the next feature that you can only use if you use a plugin. You might know loops from creating sequences uh, where you have the chance or the, the ability to actually jump back to previous queue. I'm not sure if you ever used that, um, but it's actually kind of a cool creative feature. So you can specify cube to go back to from a certain uh, starting queue and you can even specify the number of times that you want to jump back to that one queue. With loops in Lua, however, you can do this whole thing and you can use that, for example, to execute a line of code over every fixture in a selection. Or you could react to a certain number that the user has entered as a parameter for your plugin. User input in general is the next area where Lua plugins really outshine macros. In macros, you can only have users input values. Uh, and of course you can do the same in Lua plugins, but Lua actually offers you a, a few additional ways to communicate with your users on top of that. But that's not even the best part. Uh, the most exciting part is what you can do with the user input. In Lua, since it's a full programming language, it's incredibly easy to take that user input, modify it before using it, or simply reacting in a way to that input that would be impossible to do with macros. Another really important factor here is subprograms. Um, maybe you tried this before where you try to sort of have one macro do one job and then you have like a parent macro where you call 
a bunch of sub macros. I'm not sure if you ever tried to do that. Um, it's actually theoretically possible, but, but pretty cumbersome in, in practice. Because what the parent macro won't do is wait for all the child macros to finish, right? In Lua, however, you actually get this concept of, of sub-programs, if you will. Uh, and in that case, we simply call it functions. <laughs> and what's great about the functions is that they can not only execute functionality for you, they can also calculate values and return them to the main part of your plugin once they're done. So like that, it's incredibly easy to break down large plugins into easily maintainable functions. And the best argument for using plugins is actually still this whole Lua thing. It's a full programming language. It's a mature programming language. And that's really sort of the secret weapons of writing plugins in MA2, which makes them a lot more powerful than macros. Lua is a programming language that has been used by game modders for years. And as you will see throughout this course, it's a fun to use language that actually offers you a lot of great functionality. With the power of a real programming language behind you, you will not find it a lot easier uh, to build things. Not only that, but um, you will also find that it's a lot easier to get help. Since Lua has been widely used in game mods for years, there is a huge community around it online where you can actually find tips and tricks in working with Lua itself. So head on over to the next video to find out more about what Lua itself is.